Hi guys, my name's David Bertelsall and this is a DB5 stunt car from the new James Bond film, No Time To Die. This is an Aston Martin Valhalla. Today I'm at Silverstone and I get to play. This is a pretty important day for me. This is a special, special day. I don't know about you guys, but as a kid, I looked at Aston Martin, I looked at James Bond, and I just hoped to myself one day I'd get the opportunity. And today's that goddamn day. I've got the opportunity to drive this DB5, that V8, that DBS, and the stunt car from the movie. I actually can't wait. First off, we're gonna start with the DB5. It's the oldest from the 60s. I want to kind of go chronologically through the ages to see how Aston Martin's evolved. All right, well, I'm about to go for a very hot lap with Mark in the DB5 stunt car. It's just like a new car, but an old bloke, you know. So. <laughs> moment for me not gonna lie I'm here in an Aston Martin DB5 from the 60s this is so contrasting to every other car that I've basically ever driven now first impressions and this is before even getting onto the track is that this steering wheel is massive it's also very thin and made of wood no airbags <laughs> so I've just got to be careful not to crash and on that whole not crashing thing, being that this is a 1960s Aston Martin DB5, very expensive, privately owned, and certainly one that I've got to make sure to keep firmly on the track. All right, let's give it a go. <laughs> Coming around the corners, the car feels heavy. I'm not gonna lie. It's got quite a slow turning ratio, which means that as I'm going around the corner, I have to turn the wheel quite a lot in order to keep it turning. This is an iconic vehicle. It is one that I've looked up to for many, many years. It's been on my bedroom wall, looking at it as pictures on the internet and to be able to sit behind the wheel and actually experience what it's like to drive. is <laughs> actually like a dream come true, I'm not gonna lie. I think for some people you might dream of doing, playing at, what's a really nice stadium? Twickenham. <laughs> playing rugby at Twickenham or Old Trafford or Wembley. For me it was driving an Aston Martin and to be able to start to be driving this DB5 is just huge. All right, so we're moving on through the eras. We're now gonna be stepping into the Aston Martin V8 that Timothy Dalton drove in the living daylights. Now, I wanna draw your attention to something. Look how big these wheels are. Look <laughs> how the tires are. You know, you're in the 80s. <laughs> this wouldn't be found dead on a car from today, would it? Anyway, up. <laughs> Come towards me. Look at this car. It's all square, all boxy. I mean, it's it's like stepping back in time. It's crazy. Come in here. I want to show you a little detail. Is we've got like little screws going on here. So if you here, look at that. Like that's just pure 80s going on there. There's just 80s everywhere. Come on inside. <laughs> 
Right, there's a couple things about this car which yeah, I'm not entirely sold on, right? Number one, the steering wheel is hitting my legs. Not quite sure why they've decided it like this, but yeah, it's a bit awkward, not gonna lie. The second thing is that you would think that this would do the windows, it does not. The window switches up here, which is a weird one. Anyway, um, and then the other thing which has been really confusing me because I actually took this car out earlier is, is the gearbox, right? Normally you go one up, two down, three up. This is one back and down, then two up, three down, four up. It had me. Shh. Yeah, you're all good to go. It had me in all sorts of confusing situations earlier, coming into corners, thinking I'm in second, actually I'm in third, trying to be in fourth, thinking I'm in fifth. Oh, anyway. This car has got a 5.3 litre, big fat V8 engine, but it's also quite a heavy car. It's quite big, it's quite lazy. And we're gonna go and take it for a drive. Lego! So we're gonna take it out. One nice lap. And we'll see how it feels. First thing is adjusting the seat. No electric seats, obviously. Right, forward and down. Click the handbrake. And let's go. All right, so we're out in the Aston Martin V8 from the 80s. And immediately you can see a significant step up from the DB5 in terms of how the car drives. For me, it's obviously it's much lighter. The steering wheel is smaller. The braking feels more engaging. It's more receptive. But this car is a lot heavier and bigger. And I'm pretty sure I just selected the wrong gear. <laughs> this dog leg gearbox has got me in all sorts of shapes so far today. So we've got a 5.3 litre V8 making 340 horsepower, which by modern standards really isn't that significant, but it's enough to have fun with. Oh, going around these corners, you can see I'm leaning into it. The seat belts aren't exactly keeping me, <laughs> keeping me in the place where I want to be. The seat's not that su supportive. I'm going to have a nice sharp left hand turn here. Oh, you can feel all the weight. <sighs> Hit that rumble strips, chicane again. Coming round. It, for, for, the, for the size of the engine, not, not, not got that much power. 5.3 litres. But I mean, granted, it's from the 80s, so what are you going to do? Okay, we're gonna go one last lap. I'm in third, right. Let's go. Whoa! Feel that, V8! Woo! Into the chicane. Right, left. Now, I am a little bit mindful that this is an old car. Like, a 40 year old car. So I just need to be aware that if you brake it's going to be expensive, the brakes. I'm in the wrong gear again! I'm still in the wrong gear! Second, third. Moving on, we've got this absolute beauty now, the Aston Martin DBS. I mean first and foremost, look at it. Tell me there's a more sexy car. I'll wait. I'll be honest, this is the car I'm kind of the most excited about. Aston Martin DBS has been my hero car. It's been the car that I've always said to myself, if I was gonna just get whatever car I wanted, it was, it was gonna be the Aston Martin DBS. And this is the brand new Super Legera as well. Oh. Right, we're gonna go out for a little hot lap. 
gonna see what it feels like. I'm gonna try and uh, drive nice and quick and talk to you guys all about it. So let's get us started. Sounds good. All right, now we've just got a few people in the way. Just go beep beep. <laughs> Cheers, guys. All right, I'm just gonna move the steering wheel down a little bit because I don't know who was in there last time, but they had a really high position. This is the best braking car that I've actually ever been in and I'm just so impressed. Like you kind of get to a point and you think to yourself, oh my God, I've actually overcooked this, I'm going off, uh, but you don't. So we have got 715 horsepower readily available, just ready to churn up the tarmac. And you combine that with the 900 Newton meters of torque and this thing absolutely flies. The first time I got in, I was like, had it nice and gentle, just in kind of its most comfiest setting. I was like, oh, it's actually not too bad. It's not that scary. Well, it turns out when you turn everything up to 11 and mash your foot to the floor, the world goes by very quickly. Go around to the last corner, brake, downshift into second. We're coming around, start to hit accelerator into third. Up, foot flat on the floor. Go, 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 go. Oh my God, I love this car. Oh, when you get invited to Silverstone by Aston Martin and James Bond, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You don't go and you come here. This is honestly a dream come true. So unfortunately, my day here at Silverstone has come to an end. They say never meet your heroes, but this car did not disappoint. It's amazing to see the 60 year evolution of the Aston Martin brand and its partnership with 007. So definitely go and watch No Time To Die coming to cinema soon. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. My name's David Bursall and I'll see you in the next one.